Oh, hey, YouTube. Happy to see you in my kitchen today. Where else would we be this time of year? There's so much coming out of the gardens, so many fun things to do in here, and we're going to do something totally fun together today. But first, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that below. And of course, if you'd like to join our cooking community, if you're new to cooking or you just need some added inspiration, make sure you check out our cooking community at cook.theelliothomestead.com. Let's go. Every month in our cooking community, we do a call together. And one of the questions I got asked from some of the members last month was, how do you preserve your herbs? If you guys know me, I am a sucker for herbs. My garden is full of them. And this time of year, there's truly more than we can possibly eat fresh. But I'm not a big fan of dried herbs. I mean, I hang them around my kitchen because I think they look beautiful. But in terms of eating them throughout the winter, you know, pulling down dried herbs is not my most favorite thing. I keep jars of them over there, and then I find myself not really using them. So this year, we decided to make some herbed salts. Turns out that's the ticket because I've already used a ton of the ones that I've made that were supposed to be saved for winter. That's what we're going to make today. And the cool thing about this is you can use whatever herbs you have, however much you want to make. You can make it in a small batch or a big batch. But today we're going to be making my all-purpose farm seasoning, if you will. This is kind of this Tuscan herb salt blend. And this is the perfect thing just to keep on your counter all the time because it's perfect on almost every food. So, I mean, like this shouldn't even be a recipe because it's that easy, but we're just gonna start with salt and hopefully make most of it into the food processor there. If you don't have a food processor, just do this like with a mortal and pestle kind of thing. And then because we're going for this sort of Tuscan feel, and these are the herbs I grow in my garden, we're just gonna toss them in. I've got this beautiful sage here. So the first time I was backpacking through Europe when I was young and stupid and poor, uh, I happened upon this restaurant. And one of the things that we were served were fried sage leaves. This was like right outside of Siena. And I fell in love with sage. I don't think, oh, kitty. No manners. Farm kitties have no manners. Um, I fell in love with sage ever since that moment. So this is a major staple herb that we grow in our garden every year. Now I would say roughly you're looking at like 50% herbs to 50% salt here, but really you can do whatever. <laughs> if you don't like super strong herb flavors, then go less. If you like it really strong and you want to be able to add a big punch, then add more. Doesn't really matter. Can you guys hear my cow mooing outside? I can hear her. She's very loud. You'll notice I'm really not being that concerned about getting stems on or anything like that. I'm sure there are people who have a more refined palate than I do and would tell you something like maybe the stems out of bitterness. I've never really noticed that. So the point of this is simply to savor the flavor and this does it well. All right, sage is a go. I've also got, <laughs> well, I kind of sort of killed my bay tree. And so I've got these beautiful dried bay leaves that I'm gonna add in there too, which is a real Tuscan flavor. So good. Now, I suppose we should do the big daddy. Uh, this is rosemary. And this is probably my favorite herb of all time. And we're in zone 7B here where we live. And this is a variety. I can't remember what it's called, but it survives our zone. It's a perennial in our zone. And so this is, we've had this rosemary for I think three years now. And you can see, I mean, it just gets big and massive, which makes me very happy. Rosemary can have a little bit of a soapy taste if you add too much of it. So I'm going to just hold back a little bit on it in the blend. I mean, this is really, really fragrant and you can feel all the sticky resins on your hands. It's really good. Just pack it down. A common way I've seen people preserving herbs is in olive oil. And I think that's a great idea the problem that I run into with that is that it takes a lot of olive oil, which is expensive. And 
we have a lot more herbs than that. So if you're just chopping them and sinking them in olive oil, that takes up a lot of oil and you really preserve a small amount of herbs. But maybe if you just got a window box of herbs, that'd work totally fine for you. I find this way, especially because you don't have to freeze them, tends to work a lot better. All right, got one more green herb to go. This is thyme. And this is, again, quintessential Tuscan flavor. I'm not gonna worry again too much about the stems because we're gonna grind it all up. Just take the worst of it out. It smells like I'm cooking something really excellent in here. In reality, it's just salt. All right, that's looking pretty good. So now for some of the fun bits, we are going to add a little bit of a chili pepper because I think that peppers are a very Tuscan flavor, that red pepper flake kind of a feeling. So we're gonna crumble that in and then just a little bit of garlic. Garlic is obviously moist. So one of the things we'll do with this salt after we mix it all up is set it out to dry. And we can talk about how you're gonna do this. Oh my gosh, this is such a massive clove of garlic. Garlic's one of those uh, kind of magic things that you plant in the garden because you stick in one of these and this is what comes out the next summer. So it's pretty impressive. And this is pretty spicy garlic because this is this year's harvest, nice and fresh. All right, to easily peel the garlic cloves, just lay them on their side like so. Put your knife broadside down and just give it a good whack. And then the inside sort of just fall out. Try and keep the paper out of the salt. All right, good things are happening here. All right, can you guys smell that? Smells good? We're gonna process this now. Blend it into oblivion. Oh, I almost forgot. While we're here and because I have it, I'm gonna add in a little bit of lemon zest as well. makes me hungry. All right, ready? You ready, Stu? Okay. My food processor is um, kind of old and senile a little bit, so sometimes I have to remind it what to do. Oh, it smells good though. See it turning green? We're getting there. You can see it transform into this just amazing green herby color. Oh, that looks good. Once more for good luck. All right, you guys, I want you to make this and I want you to smell this. You'll notice now it's green and it's kind of moist from all the moisture in those herbs and in the garlic. 
What that means is before we can store it away for winter, we need to let it dry. And there's a couple of ways you can do this, but we're gonna spread it on a pan here. Hooey. Camera guy, can you smell that? All right, that's just beautiful. So we're gonna just spread this out. Oh, it just feels like um, beach sand. Spread it out on this tray. And if you have a dehydrator, now's a great time to pop it in and just dehydrate it for a few hours until it really feels dry to the touch. If you don't have a dehydrator, you can put it in your oven on a really low setting. Or alternatively, you can just set it out on your counter <laughs> and leave it out there for a couple of days while it dries. Every once in a while, just give it a bit of a stir so that we can make sure it all dries evenly. And that's it. This is gorgeous. And this is gonna make winter cooking all the more fun and really that much easier because think about all of the fragrances and tastes that we have in here. You could sprinkle this over any kind of meat, over eggs, over potatoes, over good, you know, crusty bread with butter. There's a lot of ways that you can utilize this in the winter kitchen. Let me show you a few of the other salts that I've made already to preserve these herbs. I told you we have been having fun with this concept of herb preservation this year. So right here is some gorgeous tarragon herb salt that I made. And this has been sitting out for a couple of days. You guys know tarragon has that really beautiful sort of anise flavor. And that's exactly what this smells like. So tarragon and chicken and cream are like the trilogy of delicious. So this is gonna be reserved almost exclusively for chicken this winter. Here's another gorgeous one. And you can see how we store them just in these glass jars. This is a green garlic salt. So if you grow garlic, you know that in the spring or early summer, you get this tall green steak called a scape. And you need to cut that off so it doesn't flower so that it will produce the garlic bowl, which is what you see here. Well, I took this green garlic and I blended it up with a bunch of salt and dehydrated it. And the result is this homemade green, gorgeous garlic salt that we've already used half a jar of and we're only like four weeks away or four weeks past from making it. So obviously that was a hit. If you'd like a printable recipe of this Tuscan herb salt that we made here together today, or if you'd like still photographs, links, or different recipes, head on over to the blog, won't you, at theelliothomestead.com. That's where you can find our entire recipe archive. You can get photographs of this, printable recipes of this. You can also get links to the cooking community, which you can check out and get printed recipes sent to you in the mail every month. I hope you guys enjoy this herb preservation method as much as I have. I just keep picturing all these jars of gorgeous green salt up in my cupboard throughout the winter, and it's making me quite happy. So I'm gonna keep going on this. I hope you guys have a great weekend in your kitchen. Until next time, cheers.